Hello, David Zritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. I am not in my basement collection. I'm not out on location or in London. I'm in my kitchen. You can tell by the oven, right? Everybody needs one. Uh, in fact, hold on, wait for it. There's my refrigerator. I mean, yeah, I'm in my kitchen. I think that's establishing shot enough because I'm talking about nutrition. I'm talking about health and wellness and James Bond. And there's something that I've been doing pretty recently, which is really focusing on protein, focusing on vegetables, and trying to get into the best version of myself using some of these bond methodologies. And I'm gonna walk you through those today. This video in particular is gonna be very handy for those of you who are rebooting their fitness regimen. Now, just to bring you back up to speed, 55 years old, I've spent an entire journey of changing things up, doing everything from going to a gym to not going to a gym, which is now to working on P90X3, to now adding a couple of other things that I've learned from other people like ab rollers into it. And I'm incredibly happy with where I am from a physical standpoint, but you can always do one better. And so what I did was, and this is my first day doing it, it's a Monday, I'm kicking off a new diet and nutrition approach that's even better than what I was doing before. And I'm gonna bring you through it. First of all, we gotta talk with the basics. What do I drink? Because I know that I'm a Bond fan, you would think, oh, he's got the Vesper Martinis, he's got the Red Stripes. I do have all of that. I've got a refrigerator filled with Red Stripes, but I am a gentle partaker of that. I don't do that all the time, obviously. In fact, I've reduced my weekly drinking. I have it a couple times a week, but mostly on the weekends. And I will say this, and this is an important distinction from an alcohol standpoint, I was drinking a lot of bourbons and, and Blackwells, and they're great, they're phenomenal, but I've actually moved to tequila, Espalon, or Casamigos Reposado, which is kind of the middle line, tequila. And the reason I've done that is because tequila is the only alcohol out there that is an upper. So I get that nice, good feeling. Doesn't make you tired and a little bit depressed like regular alcohol. But I find also with tequila, I can drink, sip a decent amount of it. And that is kind of a bond thing is like, how can you hold your alcohol even amidst imbibing and drinking this at parties? So now for about the last two weeks, when I go to a party or I go to a dinner, I've been focusing on tequila and just sipping it I'm not sitting there with my lime and wedge and, and salt and sugar and oh God, this isn't high school or college. No, this is me just trying to be responsible with my drinking. That being said, my daily, I don't drink soda. That's an important thing to talk about. I don't drink juices. A lot of those have unnecessary sugars and sugar is, it's, it's, it's like cocaine, it's addictive, but even worse than that, it slows down the metabolism. So I'm trying to sit here and work out like I told you, and I've shown you some of my workout videos, so that's not what this is about. But when I work out, I want my body, my engine to keep burning the calories or better yet, using the calories for good instead of evil. So instead of having these sugars in me, I forego a lot of the fruit juice, all the fruit juices really, uh, no sodas, and I drink water. Uh, so here's what I do. I fill up my water bottle several, and I mean several times a day, sometimes 10 times a day. I have it near me when I'm on Zooms, when I'm on Teams meeting, when I'm traveling to and from the office, in the car, I always have water with me. It's constantly around me. Maybe that's why I'm in a curious, I don't know. But the other thing is I have a ginger drink. I take pure ginger powder, which you can find on Amazon, and I put a, a teaspoon of that into hot water, mix it around and I can keep adding hot water to it throughout the day. Instead of having regular tea, which has caffeine and things in there, I just have this ginger powder throughout the day. And it, it just, a couple things. It helps your, the flora of your stomach so you can digest better. It helps your breath. <laughs> and it just, for me, it just wakes you up because the ginger has a zing to it. I only have one cup of coffee in the morning. That's it. One cup. I have my Espresso, I have uh, the thing called Stormio, which I think is an eight or nine in the Richter scale as far as caffeine is concerned. And then that's it. And I have my coffee first thing in the morning when I get up. If I get up at three in the morning, I have my coffee. If I get up at 5 a.m., I have my coffee. If I get up at 9 a.m., 
it means I'm dead and you should call the morgue because I never get up at 9 a.m. That's another story. But now we've got to move to snacks. I mean, I'm not devoid of snacks. In fact, my wife is not only an incredible gourmet chef, uh, she really is an incredible cook. She also makes these incredible baked goods, kind of her specialties. They're gluten-free because she's gluten-free. Many cases they're dairy-free, but um, she makes these chocolate chip cookies that are irresistible. I don't deny myself the fine things in life. I just talked about sugars, but I'll have a cookie every now and then. I don't need to have two or three cookies. My whole thing with nutrition is if you're going to eat something and you want to try it, a bite or two is trying it. Having three or four cookies, you're trying to get full from that sweet. You're not trying it anymore. You're, you're, you're over imbibing. Wrong word, David. You're over consuming the sugars and everything like that. So I, I do think about what I'm about to put into my mouth before I eat it. Innuendos aside, let's move on because other snacks that I have is I will have a little bit of fruit. We always have fruit around either ready on the table, in the counter, in the kitchen, or in a bowl that I can quickly grab. Why has Danielle set up the world like this in our home? She's done this because she knows me. I'm not a lazy person. I'm a pretty disciplined person when it comes to work and bond. When it comes to food, no. I, I, I need my things in front of me. She knows if it's in one of the crisper drawers, I said crisper drawer. If it's one in one of the crisper drawers, I'm not going to tend to gravitate to it. So if she has it on the counter, and you can do the same thing, have your healthy things on the counter. Put out a bowl of carrots. Go get the baby carrots like I have. Put them out on the counter. They're crisp. They're cool. You walk by on your way to do something else. You grab a carrot. Be like Bond. Bond in two movies. What? Thunderball and... I think die another day, he grabs grapes on the fly, put some grapes out there. Now, there are those out there that are purists that say, hold on a second, David, you just talked about sugars. What about natural sugars? They can slow you down too much. Don't disagree, but come on, it's fruit. All right, if I'm going to grab a Hershey bar, that's one thing. If I'm going to grab a, a couple grapes, I think that's another, and it works for me. So we'll put out fresh fruit so I can kind of nibble on it not eat tons of copious amounts, although I do eat. I know this is so old fashioned. <sighs> Sometimes the old ways are best. I do about eat an apple a day. I mean, all types of varieties, but I do eat an apple a day. Uh, it's delicious, it's crispy. It also curbs my hunger because of the fiber. You need your fiber, kids. Not just when you're old and busted like me, but even when you're young, you need fiber in your diet to flush everything out, keep a keep a clean colon. And now we've dovetailed out of a bond video into something horrific. Let's not even go there. But ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you're probably wondering yourself, David, you talked about a reboot. What is this thing, this, this, this reboot as it pertains to food? Well, I'm holding in my hand a Tupperware. These Tupperware things are you can get three of them for $4. They're very inexpensive, but you can microwave them. And it looks like there's some sort of lab experiment or something from No Time to Die that the uh, the, the wonderful uh, scientist, the baddie, would, yeah, Valdo, would have. Um, but it's not. It's not. And let me show you what's in here. First of all, what we have, first and foremost, on top are sweet potatoes. Those are sweet potatoes. I put two sweet potatoes, and I, by the way, I can make my entire week's meals. I, I make three or four of these for my lunches, um, or I can have this for a dinner, but this has sweet potatoes. It has what I call a pickin' chicken, which is a rotisserie chicken, which I've cut up in there. Um, it has spinach, fresh leafy spinach, as you can see, and um, it has avocado, because avocado is a really good fat that metabolizes. Now, the portions of this are kind of interesting. This is half a sweet potato. It is uh, a third of a rotisserie chicken. All the meats, dark, lights, yums, loves the meats, juicy. Mm -hmm. It is a uh, half of an avocado. And it's, I just caught that. You didn't see this off, but I just caught this. Cat-like reflexes is a side effect of a good diet. He said without any backing or knowledge whatsoever. But, um, so <laughs> the spinach is just, I take a big, big handful of spinach and throw it in there. 
I don't cook this. The chicken is, is obviously all cooked in there, so you don't need to do anything else. Now, it's an important distinction. I do put a little bit of pepper, tiniest bit of salt. I know, salt, but you need a little bit of sodium to replenish. There's not much in here. There's some in the chicken, obviously, et cetera, and some naturally elsewhere, but this will be my lunch. Now, this is a hearty lunch. I mean, there's it's got some weight to it. It's a bond lunch. And what I mean by that is it's not the ham sandwiches that he eats in the books or things like that. Uh, it's not a fancy lunch, but the whole thing that Bond says, Inspector, he works out when he has to. This is a very Spartan-like, tool-like lunch. And I'll explain what that means. This is getting me my vitamins. It's getting me my omegas. It's getting me copious amounts of protein, roughage, all the things that I want to not just help metabolize and build muscle. Because I used to, ladies and gentlemen, I used to eat an entire rotisserie chicken for lunch when I was building like major mass. But what I've done now, and I said this in one of my podcasts, I've put on what they call ugly bulk. It's not that ugly. It's not like I'm like spilling out or anything like that. But I put on a little bit of bulk to purposely start to build out the muscle against it. So these types of meals are really helpful in building everything up. And I have to admit, I'm higher protein than I am vegetables, but you need you need a little bit of roughage and vegetables in what you're doing, or at least I do, that's what works for me. Combining all of these together, it does create a confessional moment. I feel like I feel like I need to like pull you in closer, but it's on YouTube, everybody can hear it. For dinner, my wife makes these beautiful dinners, sometimes Italian, bolognese, pretzel chicken, schnitzel. I could go through a life of denying myself of my wife's beautiful, sumptuous cooking. I could do that. And I could say to myself, it's worth it because look, look at my abs, look at my abs. Uh, I've chosen not to. I've chosen to live a happy, joyous life of sitting down with my wife. We've got a little bistro set over there and we sit down. Sometimes I'll have a glass of wine, more often than not, just some water. And I will just enjoy the dinner. Because I do that, I'm very conscious of my portions. I am, because again, it gets back to that whole philosophy, and it's a Bond-like philosophy, if you follow me on this, of you can live a joyous life, but not to excess, not to too much, or else you're gonna be go by the wayside. So what I do is, if she makes like a spaghetti with bolognese or a ziti or something like that, which has you know, a decent amount of carbs in it, first of all, she makes only gluten-free pasta. Again, she's celiac, so that helps me. But I will not fill up a plate with a giant thing with tons of Parmesan cheese. I just don't do that anymore. I'll fill up a corner of the plate and then I'll put some vegetables and other things and I'll make a color palette. And then I will eat and I will eat slowly. I will chew the hell out of my food. And I know it sounds like a simple, like almost like Jack LaLanne type technique that goes way, way back to the 50s and 60s. But I chew my food to macerate it, to really get it down to its finest components, because if you swallow your food, it's harder to digest, especially red meat. Oh my gosh. And I've really cut back on the red meat every now and then, but it's really, really hard meat to digest. So I will sit there at our bistro set, look at the deer in the backyard, relax, have a chat, take a bite, have a sip of water, have a chat, talk about the day, where are we going to next, have a chat and it really breaks up the meal. Those of you sitting there like this, at your desk at work, dogging this in five minutes, try and get it down like during a Teams call or anything like that, you're doing yourself an injustice. And even at work, I make sure that I can have a slow meal. Even if I'm taking a call and going back to the meal, taking a call going back to the meal, I make sure that I slow things down. It's as psychological as it is physical, but it's helped me, it's helped me help you. Now, help me to really create a moment that I'm digesting everything. I'm digesting the deliciousness of the food, the moment with other people, the time that I'm allowing this self-love to eat the right way, and the time to digest and let my body process. And it's a really important part of the whole nutrition journey. All right. That's it for now. We didn't get into a lot of other things because this is a, a preheat 
We're going to be following uh, this physical journey. I'm going to really, really get incredibly serious about this, but still live life like Bond to the fullest and have these wonderful, joyous moments. Thanks for playing along, but do me a favor. And I read every single one of these, so I mean this when I look at you and say this. Put in the comments, what's your nutrition like? What do you eat? How have you hacked your life? Maybe you're going to have something that somebody reads down below that changes the way they think about food and utilize nutrition to get to the best version of who we are. And isn't that the Bond experience? Just being the best version of who we are. So thanks for playing along. We'll have more on this soon. This has been, in the meantime, David Zeritsky for the Bond experience. I'm hungry. I'm going to eat lunch. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.